Welcome to Studio 5. Colton Dixon, a new sports film and new music from a drummer in a very popular band. We have all of this to share this week and more, some of which you're going to find in the countdown of the top five stories in the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are your first two. At number five. Gospel Music Lovers. We're headed to Atlanta for the greatest night in gospel music. The 37th Annual Stellar Award. Hosted by Worship Warrior, Kiara Shear. And Ja'Kalen Carr. With special tributes to the hitmaker, Aaron Lindsay. And the choir master, Dr. Ricky Diller. Snapshots from Saturday's red carpet for the show that will be televised August 13th. But we can report Pastor Mike Jr. earned the most wins with six stellar awards, including Artist of the Year. God, we believe for it. CC Winans won three, including Producer of the Year, Praise and Worship Album of the Year, and Praise and Worship Song of the Year. And Jonathan McReynolds and Molly Music also took home three awards. And it's enough to make you wanna charge it, charge it. At number four. There she is. Hey, Gigi. I don't think she likes you. <laughs> oh, she likes me. She just doesn't know it yet. A Studio 5 first look at Gigi and Nate, a drama based on the true story of a young man made quadriplegic and an adorable monkey who becomes his service animal. Just jump already! <sighs> I was six weeks away from college. When I got paralyzed, I had nurses around the clock. And then one year ago, my life completely changed. I'd like a request for service animal for my son. And that's when I got Gigi. She's a lot smaller than I thought. It's in theater September 2nd. Well, you're going to take Gigi away, and I'm never going to see her again? I feel it in me like a beating. You have to fight. You can't just let them do that. So begins the countdown and brings us to our sit down. He's an American Idol favorite and he has new music and a new TV show to share. Colton Dixon's first new song of the year is called Build a Boat. You have a, a new single called Build a Boat. Yes. Tell me the birth of this song. Yes, um, I'm so excited about this song because I love uh, I love what it stands for. Um, I was so inspired by the story of Noah, um, looking at this guy who was telling everybody around him, "Hey, God told me to build a boat in the middle of a, a drought." You know, I could only imagine the looks and the murmurs, and um, you know, from the world's perspective, he lost everything, right? Um, by following. Um, what God told me to do. Um, I think Hollywood get, gets this wrong. It's not this big struggle. The Bible says that Noah was obedient, period. Noah was obedient. And, and I read that and I was so challenged personally. I'm like, man, I want to be known as someone who has crazy faith like Noah, who's just willing to put all of this other stuff aside and follow the will of God for my life. And, and um, I also think that there's a reward waiting on the other side of that. I think God wants to get something to you. So when he asks something really big of you, just trust him because something is on the way. Something's happening behind the scenes that you're not seeing. And for Noah, ultimately that was, it was a, it was a big warning sign, right? Like, trust me, you want to build the boat. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I wrote this song just to declare like, God, whatever you have for me in my life, I just want to step out and be obedient and say, hey, even if I'm in a drought season, I'm going to step out and have faith anyway because I know something's on the way. Beautiful. Yeah. In your personal life, has there been some Noah moments where God's challenged you to do something that to the world may sound crazy? Absolutely. Um, I feel like it happens often. <laughs> some are bigger than others. But um, one of those seasons for me was... Um, I actually got dropped by my record label a few years back and it was it was kind of out of the blue for me and and um, things seemed to be going well. So we, there was a lot of questions and and um, it was definitely a, a slice of humble pie as we like to call it in the South. But it was kind of that moment where again, we had to, we had to trust that God knew what he was doing, that God had a plan. I still felt like music was, was the thing um, after going back and forth for a little over a week. Um, but my wife said something really cool. She said, uh, 
what if this isn't a setback like it may seem, but what if this is God just setting you up for what's next? And man, I took a hold of that, stood on that, and uh, it was so cool to see what God did during that season. Not only did my faith grow deeper, um, but I felt like our relationship grew stronger because he was it. He was the source of income. He was the source of joy. He was the source of all these things because nothing else really was. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I think it's in those dry seasons where um, your faith has an opportunity to grow, but it's up to us, right? So um, that was definitely one of those build a boat moments. It's like, all right, I'm just gonna continue to do what I know to do, um, to be led by the spirit of God and God, I'll let you handle out, handle all the details. And he did. Uh, and new season, new single, but I have to ask about um, your previous number one hits uh, as well. So yes. let's talk miracles. Where'd the song come from? What have you seen it do? Yeah, um, Miracles came directly out of that um, that season where I got dropped by my label and it was one of the first songs I wrote um, starting uh, working on a new project. Um, I got to write with um, just a legendary songwriter. His name was Busby. Um, he passed away a couple years ago. Um, but so thankful I got to have that opportunity to spend time with him. But um, honestly, the song's about celebrating the little things. You know, we think miracles, we think parting the Red Sea, we think, you know, walking on water, we think all these really big things. But the fact that you and I woke up this morning and had breath in our lungs is a miracle. It may not look how you think it might, um, but it still doesn't mean you ignore the fact that he's still working on your behalf behind the scenes. Indeed, amen. So there's a, a new series out called Live and Local. Saddle up, partner. We got a show to do it. <laughs> I understand a certain singer is making an appearance. What can you tell us? <laughs> Man, um, it's about this Christian radio station. Top of the morning to you from k -Hub. And all of, like the things that go on behind the scenes that maybe the world would never see or hear. You've been my sidekick for how long now? I'm sorry, real fast, you say sidekick? Uh, okay, my number two. Um, but they they brought on some real guests like myself, honored to be one of those guests, um, to talk about life like they would in real life. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Don't you go changing the dark. Colton's Build a Boat is available right now wherever you snag your music and you can catch him on live and local, streaming now on the Pure Flix platform. Still to come. You hoop. Oop. Basketball. Born in Greece with roots in Nigeria. If we're good, we can help mom and dad. When one person in the family scores, the whole family scores. <laughs> and still, an American dream rise to the NBA for not one, not two, but three brothers. It's an incredible story. It has a lot to say about life um, and what life means and what can happen when you overcome and you just have faith and belief and you can overcome your present circumstances. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep. As the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. What starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. At number three. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? <laughs> oh, 
something new from actor, producer, and youth pastor Kel Mitchell. As you know, I got a new novel coming out called Prank Day. It'll be hitting stores September 6th. I want to introduce the cover to you all today and also show you the beautiful illustrations by Santi, who is an amazing illustrator and artist. This is the cover. This is Chase right here, Francesca, Zoe, Bobby, Timmy and Tommy, the running refrigerator. Yeah, you're gonna hear more about him. This is just an awesome, awesome book. All the pranks that Chase does on April 1st come true on April 2nd, and he has to figure out why. Be on the lookout for Prank Day, September 6th. I'm one of those people where I don't separate it. You know, I feel like God should be in everything that I'm about, in my family, in my career, and so uh, I just love it. At number two. What's happening to your face? Maybe there was a little head trauma? Maybe. Brad Pitt has a new movie, the cover of the latest edition of GQ, and attention-grabbing headlines from the interview, where he told the publication he was on his last leg. I think I confused a lot of people. It didn't mean like I'm like, I'm dying or anything. It just meant like, you know, I look at life, you know, as a child to young adult, young adult to middle age, and now I'm past that middle age. So that's what I'm calling the last leg. And, and I just wanna, I just wanna live it, you know, with more intentions. That's gonna leave us with only one more story to share in this week's countdown. We'll get to it in just a little bit. Next up, we want to share a new Disney sports film. Critics call this one well worth the watch. It's called Rise, and it chronicles the early lives of Greek-born brothers of Nigerian descent who rise to the NBA. It's okay. We go again. We fall to get back up. If we're good, we can help mom and dad. When one person in the family scores, the whole family scores. <laughs> the plot of Rise uh, follows the story of Charles and Veronica as they journey from Nigeria to Athens in search of a better life. And we watch them navigate this particular aspect of their life. And as they raise their children, we see, uh, we see, we live through the challenges with them. You're illegal immigrants. We can get you all sent back home. This is our home. I play Charles Antetokounmpo. He's the father of Giannis and Alex and Costas and Panassis and Francis. He has put in a lot of effort, huh? So what do you want for them? I, uh, I want them to be the best they can be. He's of Nigerian descent, found himself in Greece on the streets and, you know, had to provide for his family and had to, you know, instill in his family that um, with hard work, perseverance, and faith, anything you want in life can be achieved. Check it off, come back. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. I play Veronica Adetokumbo. Give it your all. And she is also Nigerian, um, makes that treacherous journey along with Charles to search for a better life um, for herself and her family. She has this unwavering faith in the dream of a better life for this family. Show them who we are. Who wants this more? Yeah. I play uh, someone who discovers basketball with, for the first time with his older brother and isn't very good at first, but eventually works on his craft, gets there, and then has a, a potential the, uh, to get to the NBA and the opportunity to do so. You gotta keep bouncing it, bro. Keep bouncing it? Mm -hmm. Okay. There was all this rumbling about who's this, you know, six foot eleven guy coming out of Greece that's built like a Greek god and moves like a point guard and can shoot and all these crazy things and um, and nobody had heard about him. Making rise has been a large part of learning even more about this incredible family story. Akino Motosho is, I think one of the best directors I've ever worked with. And this film was the perfect storm for him. Everybody will see you. I guess this is it. But if we want the prize, we're going to have to take the risk. What attracted me to wanting to direct Rise um, was I was just, uh, I fell in love with Giannis' story when I first, when he was first drafted in 2013. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you have a fair chance at your dream. The idea of this, this young man who 
only a few years ago had picked up the basketball, who was selling uh, DVDs and CDs and trinkets on the street, to now be, to be at the, pin the pinnacle of his NBA career was just so fascinating and moving to me that I just fell in love with the story. I hope audiences take away um, the sense of family, the sense of faith, the sense of staying together, and and uh, just belief, you know? Man, I, I want audiences to walk out of this film just feeling inspired, just feeling like whatever it is that they're going through, the hardships that they're going through on their, their hero's journey to their dreams um, are obstacles that they can and will overcome if they just persevere. What if this is it? And I would hope that viewers would be left with... They said I didn't belong. That it was impossible. Faith, especially in the most troubled of times, I, I would hope that people would lean into their dreams. It is a very special night for the Atanakupo family. We made this film with love, and we, 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 we present it to you with love. They can knock us down, but they can't stop us from getting back up. Rise to anybody? Are you kidding me? Rise is streaming to Disney Plus right now, and as we shared, critics are calling this one well worth the watch. Now is a great time to share a story in pictures. Here's this week's Studio 5 snapshot. Prayers and well wishes for entertainers Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. They married Saturday in a late night wedding ceremony in Las Vegas. Lopez shared the news and photos in a newsletter to fans, noting we did it. Love is beautiful, love is kind, and it turns out love is patient, 20 years patient. Words that sound a lot like 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not boast, it is not proud. Again, well wishes and these photo memories are this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Just moments away. It's good to get back. Hootie and the Blowfish's longtime drummer backs away from the stick and picks up the mic. I will bow to him, bow to him. He's sharing his new music story in Studio 5. It's been a long, cold winter here in the dark. Life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Hold my hand, only want to be with you, let her cry. Just a few of the many hit songs from the band Hootie and the Blowfish. Its longtime drummer had a hand in writing those songs, and now Jim Sonny Sonnefeld is stepping away from the sticks and picking up the mic. His new solo album is called Remember Tomorrow. It's available this week. It's good to get back, good to get back. Before we dive into current day, let's go back to the beginning. How did you get connected to the famous Hootie and the Blowfish? It was a great act, actually. When I look back, found myself drowning my sorrows at a local bar, where on stage, the lead guitarist held out a hat and said, my friend Jim here uh, just got burned out of his apartment, and he doesn't have anything, so I'm going to pass the hat to your audience in this club. and..." 
put in whatever you can. That band standing on stage was Hootie and the Blowfish. I joined the band six months later. Describe the ride for you. What's it been like? Like any ride, or like any good ride, you know, it certainly has had ups and downs. We enjoyed five solid years of being at the top, but that ride also began to come down. It started coming down for me personally on a much stronger uh, level. I was uh, caught up in really the denial that our career was sliding down and that uh, had some emotional imbalances that I tried to fix with uh, chemicals. What was rock bottom for the rock star? A moment that was the bottom for me, which turned, turned me was my four-year-old daughter who uh, found me passed out in my uh, studio couch one Sunday morning and just said a, f a few words that struck me as profound and uh, perhaps providential. She said, Dad, what are you doing? Could do nothing else but look upwards and say, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing, do I? <laughs> and uh, it was that day I turned for the first time to ask someone for help, someone for guidance. Tell me where to go, tell me what to do. It led me back to Christ, it led me back to the Bible, it led me to a transformational life. Cause he died and then he rose because my heavy heart awoke. You are sharing new music. What can we look forward to? Well, I like to write about the celebration of uh, being lost and then getting found. And, and uh, though I acknowledge God and Jesus as my savior, I also like to talk about the experience down here on earth. Acknowledging the truth for me, acknowledging there's a power, the power is love. It's not just enough to believe in it, you need to follow it, it needs to be in action. And that's my acknowledgement to, to, to that idea. I need to make sure I'm given every chance that I can to see every hope every act of love. Jim's solo album, Remember Tomorrow, is available this week. He's also penned a memoir. It's called Swimming with the Blowfish. It's also available right now. With that interview complete, we have made it to the final story in this week's countdown of the best in uplifting entertainment. Here's a look at what's finishing on top this week. At number one, we must fight rock for our people. Let's go. You're asking me to take them to war. War. Some things are worth fighting for. A Studio 5 first look at Oscar winner Viola Davis in Woman King. Inspired by true events, it's the remarkable story of an all-female unit of warriors who protected an African kingdom in the 1800s. It's in theaters in September. You are called to join the King's Guard. No kingdom in all of Africa shares this privilege. Train hard, fight harder. We fear no one. And we fear no pain. Still to come. Colton Dixon returns with a miracle life lesson to leave on our hearts. Download the CBN News app 24 7 News from a Christian perspective at home or on the road. One place for all of your news. Breaking news alerts. Set daily prayer goals and pray for news stories. Read the most important news and watch CBN News Channel Live. CBN News, because truth matters. Go to CBNNewsApp.com to get the app today. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream. 
The chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities. The chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Welcome back to Studio 5. New music fuels this production each week, and this week's soundtrack comes from Day 3 Music. Take a listen, and you will hear why Hairs on My Head is what's playing in my ear. On that musical note, we are just about out of time for this edition of Studio 5, so let's take just a moment and look ahead to see what story we're working to bring you come next week. All you had to offer was friendship. Like, who would still be around? Real situations expose fake people, so sometimes it takes getting down on life to find who's really down. He's an athlete turned motivational speaker with popular sayings like, stop letting people hurt you. Your life won't change if you don't and stop leaving your life up to chance. My point in making this video is to ask you this question. Are you being patient? Are you trusting the process? How has God surprised you most in the life you're leading right now? Oh man, um, I would have to say what I'm doing right now. Trent Shelton pays a visit to Studio 5. Make some time to join us for that story and so much more come next week right here in Studio 5. We need to say goodbye for now, but before we do, we've got time for one more word. We call it the final word, and this week it goes to singer and songwriter Colton Dixon. What advice would you give to believers looking to branch out and, and launch themselves into a career in the music business? What advice would you share? Yeah. Um... Man, growing up, I would always look on the other side of the fence and think, man, I can't wait till I get there. I can't wait till, can't, I can't wait till I get to play on that stage or whatever. And I was so busy looking over there that I missed out on everything right over here. So don't miss out on the opportunities that God has for you right here, right now. Uh, the grass is greenest where you water it. Um, so don't forget to water your own grass instead of looking, you know, elsewhere. Stay in your lane and trust that God has a plan because he does. His plans are to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. So just keep your head down, do everything you know to do, work on your craft, practice, and then trust God and it'll all work out, I promise. Colton Dixon, that's a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then please come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye everybody.